How's it going? Today is not a fishing video. It's a video about my spinning gear that I use in Norway. So many questions about it, decided to do a video. So let's go. So in this video, I will be talking about my spinning tackle. Leaders, leader knots, the whole thing. Discussion about why I use the line the way I do and why other people do it the way they do it. Everybody has a preference. I believe this, the way I do it is cheaper and more effective. So that's why I fish like this. It is really, really expensive. And if you buy high-end stuff, I mean, wow, it's expensive. So I tried to make it more affordable for myself, mostly. And a lot of other people would like it that way too. So why not? That's what a lot of this video is about. How to fish cheaply and effectively and catch great fish at the same time. First up, I'll introduce you to the reels. That's a 5,000, another 5,000, the 6,000 and the 10,000. It's not a real 10,000, it's more like an 8. And this is more like, this is like a 6. And they're by a company called Lure Killer. Chinese company. And uh, very decently priced reels. 70 quid kind of deal. This one here, this is a bit of an oddball, this one. It's called a YOLO fighter or something like that. Where are we? Here, I, I don't know if you can get them or not, but it was ridiculously cheap reel. It cost me 15 quid. It's fantastic. It's got a metal frame and everything else is like uh, graphite and plastic. And uh, what makes it special is it cost me 15 quid. <laughs> 15 quid. This guy here, this is just a standard Shimano. Boom. It's got felt washers. These, these size reels generally just have felt washers in them. But this boy here, I wanted to do something else, so I changed them for carbon washers. These lads here, yeah. This one's got a 50 kilo drag, this one's got a 35 kilo drag. So you're catching basically any fish you want. Bar six, 700 pound fish kind of a deal. So that's the reels. So now we'll have a look at the rods. Okay, yeah. So these are the rods. This is a short spin. It is actually produced for veils by Daiwa. And it's a great rod, it really is. Originally, it was 11 foot. But uh, after I introduced it to some cod in Norway, it got a little bit shorter and a little bit heavier. So, And then we've got a size six power swivel on there and some clips. I make these myself. Not the swivels, but the clips. I make them out of spring steel. It cost, cost me nothing. This is just a 30 pound uh, mono rubbing leader, 20 pound eight strand mainline, that's it. That's for the 60 gram outfit. And the next one, and it is a Mad Mouse Sniper XT. And there we go, it's rated, it's rated 50 to 120 grams. And uh, depending on what reel you have on it, you can have a lot of fun with it. And uh, the last rod is the daddy of the bunch. And I can't say that. <laughs> Curry show yo or something anyway. These rods are knockoffs of Japanese uh, jigging rods, like popping rods. This is a popping rod and it's rated from 60 to 200 grams. And on the other side of the world, this is PE rating. That's uh, PE4 to PE10. That's 40 to 100 pound line, that's what that means. This rod is rated to catch fish in excess of 100 pounds. The reel as well. So whatever you come across, you will be guaranteed you're gonna land it, from the shore anyway. So that's the reels and the rods sorted out. So, leaders is the next thing. Now leaders is a big thing, right? A lot of people, and this is the most common way I've seen this done. Because the jigs, sometimes, are up to 200 grams, right? So you will need a 70 pound leader for that. Otherwise you're gonna get a crack off or you're gonna hurt someone. There's a chance it might crack off and hit somebody and you can't have that. You just can't, not with a, a jig that size or any other type of jig. You can't have that kind of thing happening. A lot of people will run a 100 pound eight strand right through. It is thin, it is thin, no doubt about it, but it's not as thin as 40 pound eight strand. And 40 pounds eight strand is half the cost of 100 pound eight strand, simple as that. So to fill your reel, one of these reels, if, if you don't put either backing or a bottom shot on it, 
it's going to cost you a lot of money to fill a reel. If you've got two or three of these reels, and yeah, well, you know what's going on here. I've come up with this way of doing it. So the whole deal with this setup here is, is to mimic 100 pound eight strand going all the way through. So you can save money and get 40 on, right? The deal is, right, if this was a 100 pound eight strand, it would just have this short rubbing lead around the end, and this would fill the spool. But it's not 100 pound because you've tied a knot in it. Not unless it's uh, an FG or something like that. I came up with this, the, the BF knot, and it allows me to fish 40 or 50 pound line as if it was a hundred. Because if you've attached the 100 pound A strand to your, to your rubbing leader with either a uni knot or a blood knot or whatever you've got going on, you don't have a hundred pound anymore. You got 50 thereabouts. So if you put 50 pound main line on this reel, you end up with, because of the, the fact that the BF knot is a hundred percent knot, that means it is the strength of the line behind it. So if the line's 100, 100 pound and you tie the BF knot, the knot is 100 pound as well. So you keep the integrity of the line is what I'm saying, which allows me to attach it to the 40 or 50 pound here. So that means if that was a standard knot and this was 40 pound, it'd be, you'd have 20 pound line in effect. But because of the BF knot, you have 40 or 50. You have the integrity of your line. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's the whole point with this. And you can cast further now as well because your line isn't as heavy. So that's basically the idea behind the leader system I use. You could say, right, some people would say, run a mono leader all the way up to the reel. Well, that's not really a good idea either because if you're casting really hard or whatever, that will cause wind knots a lot of them and you're going to get crack offs and stuff like that and you don't want that you don't want to damage your rod you don't want to lose jigs so what a lot of people will do is they'll just put the first knot through the first couple of guys of the rod that way it doesn't cause wind knots but you need to have the 100 pound eight strand instead then so my way is actually cheaper i wouldn't necessarily say it was stronger but it's definitely cheaper and it will definitely cast further and that's for sure and you're more than likely to get less trouble with it i find anyway if you're confident in your knots you'll have no problem at all some people have, have commented use a net you can't use a net with a fish that's 30 pounds or more they just don't fit in i don't know where to get a net that big or anything else so i come with one thing i come with a gaff and if I'm not sure about the fish, I will walk it to the end of the pier and I'll land it that way. Or if I want to return it. Using a landing net by yourself is extremely difficult, especially with large fish. This is also another reason why I use this leader system here. It allows me to get extra line onto the reel, which is a little bit thicker than normal. So you can hand line the fish in the last few feet if it's especially big. So that's my leader system. It works for me. You've seen the videos. I mean, learn the knot is really simple, really simple. So this is the, the leader material I like to use. Just four strand braid. Doesn't matter what color it is, but help, it helps if you can see it. So we're gonna, we're gonna start at the reel and we'll work all the way up to the rubbing leader at the top. This is 30 pound eight strand, particularly fine. I like this knot for many different reasons. It is really strong. It is really easy to tie, it's small, it does everything I need, absolutely everything I need it to do. It doesn't have to be tied under tension like an FG or anything else like that, so when you're out in the elements and it's cold or whatever like that and you really need to tie, retie a leader, it is not a good thing in Norway when things are minus to be tying an FG with a wind. You have to take your gloves off and stuff like that, it needs to be done quickly. So. This is why I use these knots. Not that I have anything against an FG, it's a great knot when it's tied properly. But in cold weather, in the wind, the likelihood of you tying it properly is pretty bloody thin. In my opinion, everybody says, ah oh, yeah, if you practice it, go to the Arctic and try and tie it in the winter. It's not going to happen. This is what I use. And I call it, it is the BF knot. It's my knot, I invented this knot. It took me a while. You start with a loop, you pass your main line through the loop. That's it, that's the beginning. So this is the BF knot. You make a loop in the leader, 
you take your main line and you pass it through. I'm going to do four turns on the way down. Once, twice, three times, four times. Now you follow back the tag. You go around the main line just another four times. Once, twice, three times, four times. Then you go back down again another four times. Once, twice, three times, four times. You fall down your tag. And you just continue down in between the curls another four times. One, once, twice, three times. It's gonna be short. Four times. And then you go back through the loop where you came in. Doesn't matter which side you go in. That's it there. Now to close the knot, you slide it up from below. Let's take your time, slide it up. Sometimes adjusting the tag as well. If it needs to be adjusted, and so you just slide it up. Now, the thing is with the knot is why I like to use two different colors is so you can see if you've tied it badly or not. And the way you see it is, you see orange coming through in between the coils of the yellow, and there isn't, so it's pretty good. So then you can go ahead and just tighten it, just hand tight to begin with, and you pull the tag as well. Then you get your pulling sticks just to close the knot completely. So I just close it with the pulling sticks. Just flex it backwards and forwards. That's it. Then you take it, you put a drop of super glue on it, especially up the top and down the middle there. That's it now. You just get that and just roll it through your fingers, just like that. That's it. Now that knot is well protected from the rings and the rod and everything else. Boom. This is a dual PE stick. I have a video on how to make them if you don't want to buy one. I'll put a link in the description. They're pretty cool for, for braid anyway. Many different re reasons, mostly for tying knots. So that's the first one there. Nice. So we just go to the end, straight to the mono. This is 80 pound, just normal, just normal 80 pound. Now, in this case, the mono becomes the loop and it's exactly the same as the last time there. Really hard to film knots outside, so we're doing it inside. So it's exactly the same as the last time. You go through there. Now this is really gonna bite down. So I only need to do three turns on it. Once, twice, three times you fall back your tag just like before you can see how simple this knot actually is once twice three times and then back down again once twice three times and just kind of maneuver that there it's more important with this because it's heavier line get it in between the curls then another three times around and then back through the loop again that's it through the loop at the end that's it now to close this one you just pull on the tag couldn't be more simple and then just pull on these like that that's it and you just manipulate a little bit with your fingers and you're ready to close it properly with the pulling sticks. Just trim that tag off, it's a little bit big to work with. And you just flex that backwards and forwards. That's it.
Now I will melt that little mono tag there with this lighter hair. It's very directional, so it won't damage the other line. That's it. And now we'll just put super glue on it, just like before. Good load of super glue. If you're quick, it won't stick to your fingers, right? That's it. Now that knot is really protected. The super glue soaks in and makes it hard like plastic, so it doesn't get damaged as it goes through the guides or hits a rock or whatever. You can see the tag end is stuck to it now. And there's not a chance that this is going to part. So that's the rubbing leader. Lovely. So, I'm Billy. This is Billy showing you spinning stuff. Remember, wherever you are in the world, fish on. And I'll see you on the beach. Bye.